I think the first um, reason Elite came about is I played around with expanding star fields, flying through essentially arrays of dots, and um, they're one of the easiest things to draw. <laughs> and so, um, but it was that feeling of, of 3D which I hadn't really felt on a computer before. Um, and then the ad addition of sort of blocks of cheese as spaceships um, felt like it could be a great game there. And I played around with those in the early days. Um, then came to university, sort of put that to one side for a while, met Ian Bell, and then discussions ensued. And from that came the idea of making Elite. My first memories of Elite are, I was actually a student at Nottingham University when Elite came out, so I was on the same age as David Braben. My first memory of Elite was a friend of mine bringing it into school and playing it on the BBC V computers that we, we had there. And there was this amazing rumour about these guys in Cambridge that had done this amazing bit of software that used every, literally every bit of the BBC Micro. Uh, and so obviously we, we kind of rushed to, to, to get a copy to find out what it was and I was just blown away by it. I remember going to a, a talk given by some people from Acorn who were saying, oh yes, we can't do 3D this generation. And they actually showed a, um, something where the, all the, the 3D positions had been cached and were play, being played out and it was going very, very slowly. And uh, fortunately at that point, I already had 3D working very, very well. Um, and it, the irony is, had I seen that, that may have been discouraged experimentation in that direction. Well, the uh, Elite was the game that actually got me into gaming. Uh, it was the first game that I played that actually created a world that I could become lost in and really gave me the idea of what games could be. So I remember one time playing the game uh, on the Spectrum with my brother when I was like about eight years old and we brought the Spectrum down into the living room to play it on the big TV. Uh, and we had this encounter with the Rock Hermit, which was basically like this asteroid that was uh, flying around shooting at us. Yeah, I got hooked on Elite myself when I was about 10 and I spent a ridiculous amount of time playing it. Um, it consumed a huge amount of my childhood. And whilst that was attacking us, then like a Viper came into the game, uh, which the, were the police ships, and it felt like that was trying to protect us. And the whole scenario just like felt like something that no one else was ever going to see in the game, really. It's like something that was totally unique to our experience. We wanted to have combat, but we wanted a feeling of, of jeopardy. And that's where trading came out of it. And interesting, we were both afraid that would make it feel very boring. Um, but actually it contextualised it, you know, it's a, the, the other thing is um, playing a game like Galaxian with all of those sort of enemies coming af after you, it seemed so improbable that you wouldn't just run away and go and hide behind something and take them out one at a time. So to be able to create a structure like that I think was um, part of the intent about Elite. But it wasn't that we sat down and thought, right, okay, how are we going to do this? It, it, it's a design that evolved quite quickly, thinking, oh, what about this problem? I mean, you know, and, and you know, how do you do, do a learning curve and all that sort of thing? I said, oh, well, maybe we have um, diff places that are, are, are more difficult. You get attacked by more pirates, and that's where the idea of having different governments came in. So the actual first thing that I remember is um, my dad trying to teach me how to dock with the station at Lave. Um, the only problem was he didn't actually know how to dock himself, so he just sort of, his guidance was sort of, so you sort of line it up and then, wah, and then there was a crunch and then, um, yeah, then he just left me to it. The first memory that I recall about Elite is the absolute fear of uh, docking. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, approaching a station with a full cargo hold and knowing that one slip could end it all. But it, it's amazing that, you know, that, that from the game mechanic, you know, the um, uh, starting off with a small, not very good ship and a small amount of money. That, that mechanic is, is just as valid now as, as it ever was. And, um, and it's, but it, what mattered to, at the time, um, what, what I really wanted from a game, and I think Ian did as well, is that just the freedom to be able to do whatever you liked. Another thing I remember about um, Elite that, that really cemented that, that there's some voodoo magic going on here was launching a missile at uh, an enemy, kind of forgetting about it, going on with my business, then switching view to the side window and just seeing this missile explode and kill my enemy. I love the way that it managed to convince me that well, I wasn't actually playing a game, um, I was actually a real Starship pilot exploring space. Well, the original game came out when I was one year old, so I didn't play it till I was four or five. My dad got it for the Acorn Electron. So a lovely monochrome 
view, no colour, and uh, I was so young, all I knew was button made, laser go boom. So that's all I knew, it was like, yeah, does stuff. One of the coolest things about Elite was that it just sparked my imagination, and I was this space pilot in some far off galaxy, blowing up pirates and trading, doing some bounty hunting and exploring, and it just had this amazing sense of freedom which was really addictive. So my very first memories of Elite were one of confusion, slightly, because I was very young at the time. I was about six when I first played the original Elite on my Amiga. Um, so I didn't have really much of a clue of what was going on. Um, I took a short hiatus of, of the Elite universe, and then obviously now I'm here working on the next chapter of it, so it's quite exciting stuff. 